The number one thing we have to understand is we have to get off plastic consciousness too. We got to get off tap water consciousness and we have to get off plastic consciousness. You asked me an interesting question a little while ago. You asked me, it's quite funny actually, it, 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 it's, it says a lot about where we are as a civilization. You asked me, well, what if they started lining up in front of a spring? Would that cause a spring water shortage? And the answer is absolutely not because you know, the thing, we have this whole consciousness around the drought and we're in this huge drought. Uh, but all, meanwhile, there's spring water completely free available inside every single spring. There's no drought going on there. It's still coming right out of the earth. Now, if we had lines of people in front of a spring, that spring wouldn't, there would be no drought or no shortage because whether we're going to the spring or not, that water is coming out anyways. Does that make sense? That water is coming out whether we're taking advantage of the abundance that exists in that, that ecosystem or not. Now, that, that says a lot about kind of the poverty consciousness that we all have been programmed with to think that, you know, well, if we went to the springs, we would, we would dry up the whole spring. Now, that's completely, that's completely a side note, but on the same kind of frame of consciousness, at least for me, is this whole idea around plastic, right? The best way to, to capture your water and, and encase your water is in glass. We have to get out of this whole plastic frame of reference. We live in a plastic world, a synthetic and kind of phony type of world. Water has a lot to do with that and coming back to consciousness. The, here's what's going on with plastic, two things. Plastic, first of all, is not biodegradable. We already know that it's a catastrophe for the environment. It's, it's you know, we all know the whole story on plastic and what's doing to the whole ecology of the planet right now. But what it also, but what it is, is it's photodegradable. What that means is that plastic particulates degrade when they're, when they're, uh, in part, when, when photon lighting, basically ultraviolet lighting, or synthetic lighting, LED lighting, or even sun hits the plastic, it starts to break down in the water that is in it. Water is a solvent, so it dissolves plastic in of itself. So you may have had the experience where you're drinking plastic bottled water and you're thinking, hey, you know what, this kind of tastes like plastic. Well, it's not plastic flavored water. It's actually plastic that people are drinking, right? So we need to upgrade out of plastic and get into glass because those plastic particulates like the phthalates, the bisphenol A, the PCBs, whatever other 24,500 identifiable chemicals that are present in plastic bottles, whatever all that is, they're endocrine disruptors. So they literally cause an estrogen exacerbation or an estrogen dominance in the bodies of anybody that drinks it. There's no exception to that. That's actually been shown to possibly be the most profound way that this whole estrogen dominant hormone imbalance situation that's happening worldwide. We think of infertility, we think of low libido, uh, weight gain, for example, all these different things that are related to menstru menstrual issues, hormonal imbalances, all these things related to the, the whole hormone picture have a direct implication to excessive plastic storages typically from plastic bottled water. So ultimately my answer to your question is we need to upgrade to glass.